Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's and a special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us today. Down in our school end of the building lately, the 7th and 8th graders have been working on a wood project, a little shelving unit where they can display different pictures or other projects that they've been working on. Now when you're working on wood, it can be painful. Get splinters, pound your thumb with the hammer as you're using all the elbow grease sanding, you can get pretty tired out. But at the end, you've got something to showcase. Well, we're going to hear more about how our God works with wood, so to speak. We'll hear about that today with the cross and how, at the end of it all, as we carry our crosses and as we look to Jesus' cross, there is something special to showcase. So we'll follow the order of service as it's printed out for you in your worship folder, projected on the screen, beginning with our first hymn, 404.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power to defend ourselves. Guard and keep us both outwardly and inwardly from all adversities that may happen to the body and all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. When you're working with wood, it's nice to have a good finish. When you put the stain on and then the wood grains come out and maybe a little polyurethane on top of that or some other kind of lacquer. As God was working on Job here through his sufferings, what shined through at the end was simply beautiful, Job's faith. One day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabaeans attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, 
Another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. This is God's word. Continue with the duet. Still got in the dark 
Our second lesson for today, taken from Romans chapter 5, serves as the basis of our sermon. But when it comes to that whole woodworking theme, our 7th and 8th graders are going to be able to display different things on their shelves. And here, you see what God gets to showcase through the cross. He gets to showcase things like peace, perseverance, character, hope, grace for us. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were still God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is God's word. Please stand. The Gospel according to Mark chapter 8. With the 7th and 8th grade woodworking class project, everyone is involved. You don't get to opt out of that. And so when Jesus went to the cross, he involved everyone. Everyone's sins paid for. But he says, for everyone who would follow me, you must deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow me. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
text for our meditation is the second lesson, Paul's Epistle to the Romans in chapter 5, and I'll reread these three verses. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In his name, dear friends. If you were to go visit our seminary in Mequon, and you went down the street that leads to the main entrance to the seminary, you would pass by the Mequon City Police Department. And out in front on the lawn, in front of the department, is a statue of an officer who was kneeling down to help a little girl. That is out there because of an incident that happened in 1979 my first year at the seminary down the road, a December evening that I'll never forget. It's not a pleasant tale, and yet, for me personally, it is one of the most vivid examples of someone who was willing to exchange their life to protect another person. Earlier on that Sunday afternoon, a 19-year-old from Milwaukee had robbed a gas station. And then he invaded someone's home and proceeded to take a man and his two-month-old daughter hostage and to drive away in their car. Ended up in Mequon somewhere, surrounded by members of that force, and the chief who was off duty that day, when he heard about the incident, went to the scene and was able to negotiate with that 19-year-old and convinced him to let the little girl go, and he would climb into the car instead. Several hours passed. He was able to subdue the perpetrator whose life came to an end in the process. But in the process, unfortunately, tragically, the chief's own life also came to an end at that scene. The street on which Chief Buntrock lived was not named Buntrock Avenue. It was changed to that later on. One of my SEM props was a neighbor of his. And so for us, who were there at the time, it became an opportunity for us to join in the grieving, to show support in whatever way we can. And it gave us an opportunity to use a sermon illustration that I feel, anyway, is one that reflects. Well, Paul talks about how there are times when someone does exchange or is willing to exchange their life for another person. When we hear these stories, we're moved by them, we're saddened by them, and we remember them. And there's another story that moves us even more than a story like that. It's a story of a tremendous sacrifice, but one that far surpasses any sacrifice that a person would make for another. Jesus' death was like no other because of the circumstances and because of the results. We could cite other examples. 9-11, 
It's 23 years ago already. There are probably quite a few in the room here right now that weren't even alive yet at that time, or maybe very young children. And we still commemorated every year, maybe the incident, the details and so on aren't as clear, as pronounced as that year and in the years to follow, but we remember how there were people in those buildings that needed to get out and that there were those who were willing to go in there and help them get out, many of whom lost their own lives in the process. Certainly there are examples of this kind of sacrifice and heroism in the military. When we hear these stories, we're moved by them, we're saddened by them, we remember them, and we commemorate them. But how many times have you heard a story where someone was willing to exchange their life for a very wicked, evil person? Not that it hasn't ever happened or could happen. But Paul says this is rare that someone would give their life for a righteous person or a good person. But here's what makes Jesus' sacrifice so different from all others. With most of these other instances, there were people, innocent people, in the wrong place at the wrong time. They didn't bring this on themselves. In the case of Jesus' sacrifice, he made it for those who were his enemies. He exchanged his life for those who hated him, who were opposed to him, whom Paul calls the ungodly, and that's us. That includes us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We may not always think of ourselves as ungodly. We haven't robbed a, gro a store and taken someone hostage and threatened a little girl's life. And yet, Scripture clearly teaches that any time we disobey our Father's will, we're being ungodly. He knows the very thoughts that take place in our brains that are truly ungodly, that maybe never get expressed or demonstrated, but they're ungodly. We're the ungodly because Scripture tells us he died for all, including us. And we were powerless to do anything about our own ungodliness and sinfulness. But that's why God sent Jesus. To make that one and only sacrifice that will win forgiveness for all of our sins. It had to be someone that could obey the Father's will perfectly. It had to be someone who would suffer, including hell itself. It had to be someone who would give up his life for others. And Jesus did all of that. The payment is in full, and we rejoice. We remember that. We commemorate that. And we are moved by that sacrifice of our Savior Jesus. The little girl whose life got spared grew up to be a doctor. She specializes in prevention of infectious diseases and lives and works near Chicago. I read how her family, she and her family, became close friends of Chief Buntrock and his family. It makes sense that they would bond. So she now is dedicating her life to helping keep people safe.
the chief's family continued and was moved to also become involved in law enforcement. His one son eventually became the chief of the Mequon Police Department. And so it is with the members of God's family. We've been spared from eternal death. We've been set free from the bonds of sin. We've been given a life on this side of heaven to enjoy that has meaning and purpose. We get to bond with others. We get to come together with others that we know share the same joy and peace and confidence that we all have because it all rests in our Savior Jesus. And our mission is like no other. Because our mission is guaranteed to work. Because it's based on the gospel of a victorious, crucified, and risen Savior Jesus. And so now we go to work. We go to work to carry out that mission, to protect our young people from things that can harm them, to save them from the threats of evil, to let them know who their God is, who their Savior is, their shepherd, to help them cope with the setbacks that they already and will meet in life, to encourage them to use the gifts that they will discover in service to others and especially in service to their Lord. We pool our resources. We make sacrifices sometimes. We pool our resources, our monetary resources, so that we can have a ministry here to reach out into the community so that we can work with other ministries and see to it that people are being trained to be heralds of the gospel in a place like the school right down the street from the Mequon Police Department and elsewhere. And we pool our resources so that the gospel ministry can be spread throughout the entire world so that more and more lost souls may know that they have someone who gave his life in exchange for theirs so that they could have peace here and so that they could have a life like no other filled with joy and confidence and so that they, like the rest of us, can know that one day they will end up in a place like no other in our home in heaven with Jesus. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand for the create in me. continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil, who overcame us by a tree, would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated for the communion distribution, and if you're visiting with us today, also note our practice of close communion here at St. Paul's.